The idea of automatically displaying simple messages is not new. What is new is the idea of replacing almost an entire operator's manual with a message display board. The Kodak Ektaprint 250 duplicator is an intelligent machine that communicates with a series of simple sentences to allow an occasional user to operate it without supervision by a key operator and without an operator's manual. No matter how intelligent machines may be, they sometimes malfunction. As long as there are mechanical devices, there will be mechanical malfunctions. That's a fact. But that doesn't mean there's nothing we can do about it. You have a toilet sensor there. You can use the service program 423 to diagnose that. There are other services. What we can do and have been doing is trying to reduce the frequency of breakdowns by improving the design and the quality control of the equipment we build. Another thing we can do and also have been doing is making malfunctions easier to correct. This, however, is a two-sided proposition. First, we must be able to diagnose the trouble correctly, and then we must have the means to repair it quickly. Let's create a minor malfunction. Let's allow a sheet of torn paper to enter the scene. A simple paper jam is one thing to diagnose and correct, and a component breakdown is another. On an average service call, 70% of the time is spent in troubleshooting. If we could only cut troubleshooting down by one half, we would increase our efficiency by more than 30%. Kodak's solution to speedy diagnostics was to make an intelligent machine, a machine that communicates with you and tells you what's wrong with it. You saw the operator correct the jam with the help of the duplicator itself. The duplicator told the operator what the malfunction was and how to correct it. There was no need for special instruction cards or an operator's manual. Through the display board on the control panel, this duplicator talks to the operator using a vocabulary of about 200 sentences. But that's not all. Mechanical devices are subject to wear. If there's a change in image quality because of wear of parts, the operator can adjust the duplicator using a simple test target. The test target tells the operator where to begin. Then the control panel comes into play and gives step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the adjustments. This way, quality of image stays correct longer without requiring a service call. For special jobs, the operator can adjust the image quality by temporarily adjusting exposure and contrast. When the duplicator realizes that its problem is beyond the abilities of the operator to correct, it says so. It even displays the telephone number to call and tells you what to say. Greg, can you make a service call at 568 Main Street? 568 Main Street, uh, yes I can. What seems to be their problem? Their duplicator is down. They have a code X71. Also, the key operator is away. Whom can I contact when I arrive? You'd think that a sophisticated machine, such as this duplicator, would need sophisticated service instruments, but that's not the case. Advanced instrumentation is heavy, expensive, and cannot compensate for variations in mechanical components on individual machines. In the past, service representatives had to carry a service module that contained specific diagnostic programs. Now, the Ektaprint 250 duplicator has a built-in self-diagnostic computer. All the Kodak Equipment Service representative needs to service this duplicator is this key. This is the ESR of access to the computer service diagnostics. Besides the 200 sentence vocabulary to the operator, the computer uses 250 more sentences to communicate with the service representative. To develop the operator control panel, Kodak's Human Factors section worked closely with design engineers, the same people who designed several features of the duplicator to be user-friendly. What we could do to make this user-friendly, mm -hmm. okay, and we talked about certain things. Could you show me some of those? Uh... Yeah, one, one thing I think I can show you here is we've got this made now so that uh, we can get a nice message up here if 
and customers making copies and the supply all of a sudden gets low. Now I can simulate that on the breadboard here. And what happens is we're, we're running from our upper supply and if all of a sudden the upper supply paper looks like it's getting low, we can toggle a switch here and notice what happens. You see uh, an attention beep there. That was something that you asked for. When the key operator is not available to give any clues to the malfunction, the service rep can talk directly with the computer. The computer remembers if the machine is not operating within a given set of specifications and makes a note of it. The duplicator can run a logic health check on itself automatically, and it takes only one minute. If the duplicator fails the health check, the computer will give the service representative a particular error code. This code sends the ESR to the diagnostic guidelines in Kodak's Customer Equipment Service Manual. Well, it's not exactly a manual. It's a small sheet of film that contains micro photographs of about 80 pages of text. Another one of Kodak's contributions to business efficiency. But that's another story. Speaking of an intelligent machine, the logic and control assembly is essentially a computer in the form of five circuit boards, just five. The boards are designed for easy access, repair, and replacement. This is an advanced computer to help make operation easy and diagnosis still easier. It has only one central processing unit board, two identical input-output boards that are also interchangeable to cut down on the number of spare parts we must have on inventory, an IRAM board that has a non-volatile memory, the same type of board used by the military, and one main operator control panel computer board. To further simplify servicing, major electrical connectors are identified for quick reference on site or even by telephone. Many subsystems have been simplified or eliminated. The fuser temperature sensors maintain roller contact with springs. The feeder positioner exit path rollers do not require field adjustment. And the developer station height adjustment has been eliminated thanks to precision locating pins. Also, the Ectoprint 250 duplicator allows a more precise way of adjusting various subsystems using digital control values. For example, to adjust a side-to-side -side registration, the service rep enters the proper program. He measures several copies and averages out the registration adjustment. In this instance, one-tenth of an inch. Now all he has to do is enter the difference and verify the change. The registration is now correct. The service rep finishes the job by entering the new adjustment value into the duplicator's permanent memory. Another example of using digital control values for adjusting subsystems is the fuser adjustment. The service rep checks the fuser roller temperature. If an adjustment is needed, the rep enters the correction factor. After allowing time for the temperature change, the rep verifies the correction and enters the new digital control value into the permanent memory. In the past, Finally, uh, the let's hear a service engineer explain the illumination power supply. Up to 80 pounds. On this particular machine, we have divided the supply into three separate modules. The high voltage storage module, the control module, and the high voltage transformer. This significantly cuts down the amount of weight an ESR or service representative may have to carry or handle if he has to replace the supply. The heaviest portion of the supply right now is a transformer which weighs approximately 30 pounds. This power supply is also programmable which allows the service rep and the customer to adjust illumination levels through the keyboard of the machine. Another serviceability feature of this power supply is its built-in diagnostic panel. This panel allows the ESR to pinpoint problems in the illumination system.
I have disconnected the command lines going to the power supply and now by simply pushing this button you can see that I get a commands defective signal. Behind these apparently simple procedures stands a large staff training, testing, publishing, updating. Here tech writers and artists create publications that show among other things illustrated adjustments and wire run lists. These publications are constantly updated for accuracy and clarity. Here also service engineers help field personnel solve challenging problems. In another part of Kodak Engineers test parts and components for continuous performance, endurance, and economy. What's the bottom line? A company that keeps its customers satisfied is a company that's thriving and producing a good living for its people. And that's good for all of us.